late video on Fiddlesticks. I originally didn't want to do a video on him yet, because just as I'm going to release this video, he will appear on PBE, which means that we will probably get his voice as well. But there were so many people requesting me doing a video on the Fiddlestick cinematic, that I decided to do it quickly without a script. With that said, because I waited a couple of days, I got way more info to work with. And on top of that, some people even interviewed Jared, who is the writer for Fiddlesticks, and he gave us a few teasers as to what's happening with him. So without further ado, even though the story will be revealed at any moment now, here's the explanation as to what is happening with Fiddlesticks as of right now. Let's now cover what is happening in the cinematic. At the very beginning there is a shot of a castle on a hill. Now some people thought that this castle is the same place that appeared in the Warrior cinematic. But that's not true, because in the Warrior cinematic, the Masians were protecting their lands from the invasion from the north, which is where Silas is now. That's why that castle was covered in snow. It's because the warrior cinematic was happening on the borders between Demacia and Freljord, where snow is pretty much permanent. So just the fact that we can't see any snow here makes me realize that this is taking place a little bit more to the south. And as you'll see, Fosbarrow will be mentioned, which makes me think that this is taking place in northwest. So again, just to clarify, this is a brand new place in Demacia and we are not sure where exactly it is. Then the shot goes to the two Demacians. Again, I do understand why people thought that this was the same place as the one in Warriors, because these Demacians have the exact same armor, or at least the helmets match. These are not elite warriors, because the Dauntless Vanguard, which is the highest level in the Demacian military, has very iconic different kind of armor. So these are most likely your common soldiers. And here is where Fosbarrow gets mentioned. Whole countryside's on edge after Fosbarrow. Now, in case you don't know, False Barrow is a massive story that happened in the Masia. Many years ago, Lux's great-grandfather, who was called Fossian Crownguard, fought with a demon somewhere in northern Demacia. Although he defeated the demon eventually, he died as well. And near the place where he died, they built Fossian a grave and the town False Barrow was built in his name. The thing is, the demon didn't really die. Fossian just managed to banish him for a time. And in fact, the demon was now luring around the grave, which means that the entire town of Fosbarrow was still in danger. Decades later, the demon reawakened, and we found out that the demon was in fact Nocturne. What Nocturne did in Fosbarrow is that he started attacking people in their sleep. The moment someone started dreaming, Nocturne would be able to attack them in their own consciousness, which resulted in everyone having awful nightmares. The thing is that people who died in these nightmares often died in real life as well. So what ended up happening is that people simply refused to fall asleep. So people started dying of lack of sleep as well. So in the end the entire town was a mess. Nobody could sleep and those who did died. The story got resolved with Lux and Garen who ventured into this town, they fought back some shadowy beasts, and Lux fought her way all the way to the grave of Fossian Crownguard, where she found that Nocturne took over the body of a young boy. And through that boy he was terrorizing the town. So then, with some excessive light, Lux managed to banish Nocturne for the time, she didn't actually kill him, and that's how she saved the day. Which brings us back to the cinematic. Here the Demacian soldiers mentioned that mages were responsible for what happened in Fosbarrow. Filthy mages. Which is a lie. It's just that Demacians are racist when it comes to mages. And so whenever something evil happens, it's always the mages. So just keep in mind that these soldiers don't actually know what they are talking about, and they just think that the mages caused all of this. And then we get the horror shot where Tedric just disappears. Now I looked around for the name Tedric, and I couldn't find anything on Universe. I quickly went through the book again, but I did it quite quickly so I'm not actually sure if he's not in the book. But as of right now, I don't think that Tedric was an important character. But either way, he's gone now. Now what is cool here is that this cinematic reveals a couple of things about Fiddlesticks. When Riot started working on his rework, we learned that Fiddlesticks will be using the voice of his prey. So here, since he killed Tedric, he's now using his voice to lure other people in. So here you don't actually hear Tedric himself. That's just Fiddlesticks mimicking his voice. Hey, Tedric. Help me. Help me. And as the other soldier gets closer, you can hear the real voice of Fiddlesticks, which is the strange mumbling that doesn't even make sense. Tedric! Tedric. 
And then we get the beautiful shot that everyone knows how it ends. Notice how Fiddlesticks has this exact posture. He looks kind of humanoid, but there is something off. We'll get to this later. And then on the ground you see the shadows of the crows, but you don't actually see them above him. I'm not exactly sure what this is, I'm not sure if this is just a shadow of the crows, or if this is an illusion that Fiddlesticks is using. But either way, Fiddlesticks then fully awakens and this is what happens. Here I quickly want to mention something that TB Skyen said. He figured out the reason why Fiddlesticks is moving this way. You see, even though he's trying to look like a humanoid, when he's moving around, Fiddlesticks is not limited to using only two legs. He can pretty much sprout out as many limbs as he wants. So whenever he's moving forward, he's using any means he can to move as fast as possible. That's why he's flailing his body around. That is simply the most efficient way to run when you have that many limbs. And that's what's so cool about this animation. And of course, at the very end, you can hear Fiddlesticks saying his own name in a strange voice. But I'm not actually sure if this is the voice of the demon or if it is a mimicked voice. Now, although that is it for the cinematic, as I said, some people interviewed Jared, so we already got way more information. So let me quickly go through some of the interesting points. For example, if you look at the splash art that was revealed, you can see that the real demon is in the cage in his chest. That's the source of what Fiddlesticks is. All the stuff that is around him, including the cage and the metal limbs, are just tools that Fiddlesticks is using. With that said, originally I thought that because Fiddlesticks has a metal cage and metal legs including a made up arm, I thought that someone made the cage for Fiddlesticks, so that Fiddlesticks would be restrained. But then Jared actually tweeted at me, and he confirmed that Fiddlesticks is not trapped in the cage. Which brings up a massive point. We know that Fiddlesticks is a demon, but in case you don't know how demons work, in the world of League of Legends demons are these floating demonic spirits. They come as little modes of energy in the spirit realm, but there, as they absorb more and more magical matter, they get bigger and bigger and eventually they can get their own consciousness. And once they become conscious, they start learning about how the world works. Evelyn is perhaps the best example. She started as a tiny spirit, then she grew bigger and bigger, she learned that there is a physical realm beyond the spirit realm, and she figured out that if she takes on a physical shape, she can go into the physical realm. And there she can absorb even more magical essence from living things. That's essentially what Evelyn is doing right now. She is hunting for prey in the physical world so she can eat their life essence. The thing is that over time, Evelyn, as in the demon, figured out that she can charm humans. And by doing that, if she attracts the prey to her, she doesn't have to go out and hunt for them. The prey will come on its own. And in fact, Evelyn figured out that if she makes the prey comfortable and then she terrorizes it right before she kills it, the flavor of the life essence is even better. And I do believe that Fiddlesticks is doing something similar. All demons are hunting living things for raw emotions. That's where the essence comes from. Tom Kench likes to devour greed, Evelyn is consuming people with lust, Nocturne is probably going for dread, after all that is the outcome of paranoia, and Fiddlesticks is probably going to go for raw fear. Now here's the thing, because we know that demons can get clever and they can start using different tools to become better hunters, just like Evelyn figured out how to put on an attractive appearance, I think Fiddlesticks is trying to look humanoid to not scare people straight away. That's why he looks like a human, kind of, but something's always off. That's probably because he has not learned how to fully blend in yet. And here is where the tweet gets important. When you combine this tweet with the interview, we suddenly realize what Fiddlesticks is doing. The metal cage and legs were probably made by Fiddlesticks, because that may give him the basic human appearance. But the interview reveals more. I'll go through the quotes. Building its body of random items and piecing itself together in the shape of the humans it doesn't understand. This is the basic description of Fiddlesticks, which pretty much underlines everything I just said. Fiddlesticks is trying to look human, but he's probably not as experienced as the other demons. Another quote is, then it listens and repeats. So again, just like Evelyn has her methods to lure in prey, every time Fiddlesticks takes down a human, he is learning about their voice patterns, and he is then using their voices to lure in other people. 
He's kind of like a parrot, really. Another quote is, a primordial entity that predates the rise of civilization. You see, this term is quite vague when it comes to the history of Runeterra. Because even if you say that something is ancient, that only means that it is as old as Shurima. But to the Shurimans, for example, Evelyn would be ancient. So if someone predates the rise of civilizations, that doesn't really tell us much. But I do believe that Fiddlesticks is younger than Evelyn, since Evelyn existed pretty much at the very beginning of Runeterra. But she only started being sentient during the Rune Wars. Then the interview says, the world had not seen one of its kind in tens of thousands of years. And there's more of them out there. Which makes me think, are they talking about other demons? Because technically, the world had not really seen the demons. They always strike from the shadows and they disappear. But I believe the world is aware of someone like Evelyn or Nocturne. And in fact, Tom Kench is an icon in Bilgewater. Of course they know about him there. So I believe that there are more kinds of this specific demon that Fiddlesticks is. Now, although many writers keep saying that Swain and Fiddlesticks are not actually connected, nothing was written on Universe yet, so that theory is not out of the window yet. But there is one last piece of a hint that I want to show you. If you look at the music video released for Fiddlesticks, there is a point at which you can see a demonic summoning circle. And in that summoning circle, you can see three symbols with one symbol in the middle. Now, what is quite peculiar is that the eye you can see on top is the summoning symbol used when Swain transforms. And when Fiddlesticks uses his ultimate, the appearance of the demonic circle is very similar. So I wonder, what if there are three pieces of this demon who are separated, and together they make one demonic god? It's totally just a blind theory, but there are too many coincidences between Swain and Fiddlesticks to simply cross them away. So again, very quickly, here is what we learned about Fiddlesticks. He is a demon that is hunting for raw fear. That's why he's trying to make his prey as scared as possible before he takes them down. We also learned that the metal parts in his body were probably made by Fiddlesticks. He is still inexperienced, and he's not really sure what humans actually look like, but he is trying to look human. So at least he's getting there. But the one thing that is still peculiar are the crows. Right now we have no idea what crows have to do with Fiddlesticks. It might be because the demon started hunting in the fields of Demacia. And so he might be mimicking the animals of Demacia as well. But that will probably be resolved when we get him on PBE. The very last easter egg I want to mention is that when Zoe was revealed, it was confirmed that the key that Zoe has was taken from another champion. And that champion was hinted to be the old Fiddlesticks. But what's amazing is that the new Fiddlesticks has the same keys too. So Zoe is now carrying one of the keys from this monstrosity. I think it is just an easter egg, but at least there is a theory as to where her demonic side comes from. Hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other leak facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.